Anatomists have been working to fully understand the brain and spinal cord since as far back as the 4th century BC. From Hippocrates in ancient Greece to well-known 20th century anatomists such as Paul Broca, Carl Wernicke and Corbinian Brodmann. Some of these names may already sound familiar because certain regions of the brain are named after these guys. For example, Broca's area, Wernicke's area and Brodmann areas. Another well-renowned neuroscientist is the Swedish scientist Bror Rext, who in the 1950s created a new functional division of the spinal cord grey matter called Rext Lamini, which brings us to the subject of this tutorial, the grey matter of the spinal cord. You might be wondering what exactly we'll be learning about today, so let me just give you a quick overview. We'll start by having a brief recap of gross anatomy of the spinal cord and what it looks like in cross-section. We'll then move on to our main event, the grey matter. We'll see how it's divided into three areas, namely the anterior horn, the posterior horn, and the lateral or intermediate horn. We'll then take a closer look at the structures found within each of the horns, namely the nuclei, and how the grey matter of the spinal cord can be further subdivided into areas called the laminae. We'll then look at how the structures within the grey matter contribute to its appearance at different levels of the spinal cord, and we'll finish up with some clinical notes. Before we start learning about inner structures of the spinal cord, it's useful to quickly remind ourselves of how it looks from the outside, because it is often related to what's on the inside. We'll start with a really brief recap of the gross anatomy of the spinal cord, but if you feel like you're struggling with any of the information, or if you simply want some more detailed revision, don't forget to check out our website for more excellent videos to help you out with that. The spinal cord is a tubular structure, which extends from the frame and magnum of the skull to approximately L1 to L2 spinal level of the vertebral column. It begins as an elongation of the medulla oblongata of the brainstem and terminates as conus medullaris. Below it, we find the cauda equina, and there are two enlargements along the length of the cord, one in the cervical region and one in the lumbosacral region. And we'll actually learn why they're there later on in this tutorial. At each vertebral level, a bilateral pair of nerve roots leaves the spinal cord via rootlets to form the 31 pairs of spinal nerves. Let's take a closer look at the cross-section of the spinal cord because that's the area we'll be focusing on today. We have the anterior aspect here and over here we have the posterior aspect. You'll also often encounter the terms ventral and dorsal which mean anterior and posterior respectively, especially in relation to the spinal cord structures. So you've obviously already identified the grey matter due to its distinct butterfly-like shape and as you can see, it's surrounded by the white matter. This video is not over yet. Continue watching now the full video at kenhub.com. We have lots more videos like this one available to our premium members on our website, not to mention all the fun quizzes, related articles, and atlas sections. So click on the button in the middle to watch the full-length video and master anatomy.